All right, what's up guys? Today is Thursday. It is Thursday morning. Uh, I'm gonna get the truck at oil change um, right behind the store. But first I'm gonna grab me some coffee and then we'll go drop this trailer right next to the uh, oil change spot and go into the, uh, the shop and get the oil change right quick. And then afterwards, I gotta go take care of some other things, but there is nothing lined up on schedule. So uh, today is just the day to get other things done and get things prepared for this Halloween and anything else that may end up calling in. All right, so I'm in line here at the oil chain shop and I had to drop the trailer. I don't know if you could see it back over there, but while I was dropping it, the guy in front of me, it looked like he was scanning my dumpster because I could just see his phone sticking out of his window. Uh, but um, anyways, yeah, so we're probably, I would say what, 50, 100 feet away. And uh, you could literally scan that dumpster and it's a great way to get business. So if you have equipment and stuff like that, go ahead and put your QR code on your piece of equipment. Uh, you can make your own QR code on the iPhone. iPhone has an app that's already built into the iPhone called Shortcuts. Open that up, go to the search tab, and it'll say uh, create a QR code. And then from there, you can plug in your link to your website and it'll generate a QR code for you. And then you can download it or screenshot it however you want. And you can do the same thing on Google Pages. So if you don't have an iPhone, or whatnot you can go to google pages download that app and you could plug in your website or any website or link all right guys so um i got a call this morning uh from the people that are doing my embroidery or not my embroidery but my screen print printing for my shirts and stuff like that i just ordered some long sleeve shirts and hoodies and uh beanies and just some gear for the you know fall winter season um, so if you're starting out, it's very important that you be professional and look professional, okay? So go out and get you some shirts, uh, a hat. You know, you don't want to spend way too much money uh, at the beginning. You want to just get you enough gear for yourself or whoever's going to be helping you. Uh, that way when you show up to jobs, you look presentable and uh, they can recognize your brand and everything like that. And then you can take pictures and stuff like that and put it on your website, social media. So again, you can look professional to your community and be trusted. Um, and so anyways, as far as like picking out who to go with and stuff like that, just go to your local mall or look for a local uh, embroidery shop or something like that that'll help you out. I mean, you could get it online, but it is a bit more expensive uh, from my experience. Um, so I have a local person who's doing my shirts and stuff, and then I have someone else who did this hat because I'm always testing out other companies as to who, who comes out the, you know, better as far as quality. All right, so I have two full boxes of stuff, so let's go ahead and dive in and I'll show you guys what I got. And we'll see how it turned out. So with this company, I didn't really like the hat. Like this is from a different company. Uh, the hat quality, the stitching, I didn't like it. Again, I'm picky, okay? So this is the beanie quality. So I, um, I purposely had them do the beanies. That way I could see how their stitching came out. So if I wanted to get a hat like this hat with their with their company, then I would know, you know what to expect as far as the stitching quality. Now, as far as the stitching quality with this one, the, the hat that I have on is way better than this one, in my opinion. All right, so here's a look at the box. This one has all the beanies. I believe I have 12 or 15 beanies. Yeah, 12 beanies. Uh, and then, so here's the beanie. Here's the stitching quality. Do you see how it's like all like the E and the, the junk and it's kind of blurry. I mean, it's not horrible. It looks good, you know, for a beanie. But like if I was to put it on a hat, you know, the hat looks a lot clearer from this company than it does with this company. So there's the difference. All right, so this is a short sleeve. So we have short sleeve, sleeve and long sleeve. It's gonna be getting cold. So I wanted to get some. the front of the shirt uh it's made out of that uh you know t-shirt cotton material most of my other shirts are made out of that uh like silk material which are really nice but i wanted to try something different and get some cotton t-shirts uh over time they'll fade and whatnot but i kind of like the fade look after a while so here's the back of the shirt the screen print is on point and then on my sleeve came up with my new design there's the U on the sleeve. Came out great. So I'm gonna grab a long sleeve and put it on and I'll show you guys what it looks like. 
All right, so here's a look. I have the beanie on, I have the long sleeve shirt on, and then I have the hoodie in my hand. So here's a look at the hoodie. The hoodie wasn't supposed to have the use, so they got that good, correct. Um, so the brand of the shirts are the, I don't know how you say it, Gildan or Glidin. I think it's Gildan brand. Um, they work out pretty good. It's just over time they're gonna fade and whatnot. Um, but I mean, to me, it, it seems cooler when they fade. Uh, more like a work shirt. These are work shirts, so. Anyways, here's a black hoodie. And here's a look at the OG shirt, all right? So this was the second design of my logo, which is just Junk Express Services, just the lettering. Uh, so over time, it's gonna look like this, kind of faded, le uh, letters might be cracking. I think it looks cool. Vintage look. And um, you know what? I just realized something. They didn't put the the screen print was supposed to be across the chest, so they messed up on that as well. Now I'm just thinking about it now. So they've done this before. It's like a hit and miss with them. So uh, it's not that huge of a deal to me, so I'm not really gonna complain about it. I waited two, three months. Uh, so that's what I'm telling you about trial and error, like try people out and stuff like that. So I've tried them out. You know, I like their screen printing. I like the color. Uh, it's just, they don't always get it on point. And that's one of the uh, confusing, uh, or not the confusing, but one of the stressful things about it is like they don't always freaking get it on point. But anyways, I can't complain about it. Gear looks nice to me. Uh, so anyways, let's get on with the day. Oh, again, we don't have nothing on schedule right now. So um, I don't know if y'all seen my previous video where I tell you guys like in the junk removal business and this type of a business, it's, it's an on-call basis. So you're not always going to be booked out for like a month on end or anything like that. The max really is like a week, maybe two weeks. Um, so it's like an on-call basis. So I received a call or a text message, not a text message. I received a message on my Facebook page. Uh, someone wanted an estimate. I gave them a rough estimate. I told them to send me pictures. They're going to send me pictures later on today. So we might end up landing a job for today. If not, I'll push it off for tomorrow if it's too late in the day. But really, I want to focus on getting things done, like picking up my gear, uh, taking care of other equipment, and things like that. Um, so the slow season is here, okay? So I, for the beginning of September all the way to the end of October, we've been I've been staying pretty bu busy i would say this is probably one of the first days out of my vlog journey with you guys where basically a weekday with like nothing on schedule other than a rental pickup but really that's just a pickup and i'm going to push that one off till monday but you'll probably see and you'll probably in the slow season especially starting out that you're not going to get any jobs you might end up getting like one or maybe two jobs maybe three out of the entire week um, now, if you've been in business for a little while, like I have, then you might end up, you know, going a day, two days, maybe three days max with no work. Uh, and it might be inconsistent. So like say Monday, nothing calls in. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, you're working. And then Thursday, you're not working. And then Friday, you're working. And then Saturday and Sunday, you're not working. So it just skips um, compared to like summertime or springtime where it's just nonstop every freaking day is like four to six nine jobs a day non-stop uh, and that's where i'm that's where i talk about you know saving your money is very important and in investing into your business and stuff like that so anyways let's get on with the day all right so i just dropped off the equipment the trailer and the dumpster uh that way i could go in town go downtown to the courthouse or whatever it is and uh go ahead and show them my citation show them that i got my uh, my new stickers and registration and all that stuff and hopefully i don't have to pay anything uh but we'll see what ends up happening there and then after that we'll go ahead and hook onto a trash trailer um that way we can start dumping the trash trailers get them out of the way and uh i could possibly oh and then i gotta go pick up some stuff for family so uh, yeah and then i just had a um a commercial client reach out to me 
Uh, it's a big nationwide drug removal service. They happen to not have a location here in my city or even in my area. So whatever jobs they end up landing, they get with me because since I'm the highest rated uh, and I'm the more, I guess, legit, or they just like my brand or they just call me, I don't know what happened. They just chose me, okay, I don't know. I don't know why. So I do all their work as third party, third party hauling. So I give them an estimate and then they mark it up, I'm sure. And it's usually commercial stuff. All right, so I just finished paying the citation. So anyways, $132 ticket. Uh, pretty pricey and then like just to get the sticker was like 70 80 bucks so i spent like over 200 uh just to get my stickers and then i had to pay this hopefully i could write this off as a legal business expense since it was in the business truck and i used the business debit card to pay for it anyways on with the day uh when life hits okay and one thing about expenses okay uh like oil changes food gas maybe even legal like you know this morning um when you have, I use the QuickBooks app, okay? So the QuickBooks app has a, a, uh, a built-in app in it where you can take pictures and uh, it basically stores the picture and the uh, transaction and then it automatically uh, detects it and then puts it in a category for you as an expense. So that's something you wanna look into. But I will say this, when I first started and I looked at, I downloaded the QuickBooks app, it was very confusing for me because I didn't have anyone to guide me or anyone to do my books. It was just me. So when I talked to the CPA guy, he told me basically, before you start making real money, just track it yourself and it's not that big of a deal. But once you start making money, okay, like say six figures or something like that, and you have the money, I would highly recommend hiring a book service, a bookkeeping service, local bookkeeping service that could help you with your books through QuickBooks or whatever software that they may use. It'll really, really help you out, all right? Anyways, I'm about to hook on the air compressor. I get this air compressor from Harbor Freight. It was like $60, $70. This is a lifesaver right here. And this is what we got going on. We have a flat on the trash trailer. I need to go ahead and dump this trash trailer and dump that one and get these ready to sell. But here's a look at the newest container that I have. Uh, I'm gonna wait to go ahead and drop this one off uh, where I'm gonna be doing my promotional deal in the neighborhood. Uh, it's going to be sitting at the corner of a street in a pretty good neighborhood, pretty busy neighborhood. And uh, I want to, I'm going ahead and promoting it uh, on my Facebook page, the social media and stuff like that to invite people to come by this Halloween. I'm going to be inside that dumpster handing out candy, scaring kids as Oscar the Grouch. Uh, I need to finish putting the decals, but it's really windy again and it's cold again. So I need to get a heat gun and make time to put the decals on this dumpster. All right, so now that we finished that uh, pickup for our family member, um, I'm gonna head to the landfill and get this uh, trash trailer dumped. We ended up landing that commercial job. They just want a certificate of destruction, also known as a COD. So now in our industry, junk removal, trash hauling, you will come across things that you probably shouldn't be hauling, like uh, hazardous material. Cannot be hauling that stuff. You'll get in trouble. Uh, there are certain sensitive things depending on usually commercial stuff like companies that want paper shredded uh, and stuff like that. We're not in that. We shouldn't be shredding paper or anything like that. Um, so if they ask for that kind of a service, just stay clear of it because you do have to have certain uh, things to get rid of that stuff. But now when it comes to like e-waste and like say they, they really want uh, a certificate of destruction to basically know that it had that it's been destructed and that if something uh, were to happen like say someone got their hands on their cash register and started using it or something at their store or trying trying to sell it with their brand name all over it uh, they could come back and get you so when they ask for a certificate of destruction it means that they want to make sure that it gets destruction which is gone trashed removed so it needs to be either going to a landfill or like a scrap place or a junkyard or something like that. Uh, so they just wanna make sure they know where it went and that you 100% got rid of it. So they ask for pictures of before and after and that certificate. You can find that certificate online and just uh, look up certificate of destruction, copy paste, make it your own and send that along with it. It's basically just information about where you picked it up and where you went to go dispose of the items that they want gone. All right, so we're gonna have to hand unload this trash trailer. 
Uh, it's windy, but not too windy. The dirt's not kicking out everywhere, which is good. Uh, but when it is, it really sucks. So as you can see, he's unloading right now. But once it gets uh, too packed right here, we have to move forward. So now we basically got most of the trash out. Now we just gotta rake everything out. Uh, having the roll off system has made me a lot lazier. I don't miss doing this every single day. I did this for about almost three years, over two and a half years. I've been doing this, hand loading and unloading. All kinds of load. The worst loads were construction debris. Sheet rock, two by fours, you know, a little bit of cinder block, stuff like that. Yeah. All right, so he's finishing it up back there. Um, now we have to take this to our other yard and uh, go pick up another trash trailer and dump it as well. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the next one ain't as bad as this one. This one had a bunch of books and magazines. I ended up making it a lot harder. And then it had rotten food. Like, uh, so we're throwing the bags out and one of the bags ripped and it looked like shit just came out the bag. It smelled horrible, but yeah uh but whenever you start a junk removal business i mean again do whatever you got to do to get it started and stay within your budget don't go into debt or crazy amount of debt over something you don't know how it's going to turn out or if you're going to like it it's that's not really smart so really buy into something that'll help grow your business and that is affordable and in your budget if all you can afford is like an old truck and use the bed of the truck and create a cage in the back then go for that nothing wrong with that just you know don't jump into too much debt all right so now i'm here at the gas station truck stop where i need to go ahead and put fuel so we did end up landing that commercial job but i'm gonna push it off for tomorrow uh, because i really do need to focus on dumping these trash trailers um, so today i'm gonna be making zero dollars today and i'm gonna break down all my expenses for today that way I can show you guys, especially during the slow, slow season, uh, you're going to find yourself spending money and not making money. And you're going to have to mentally, you know, combat that and be putting in work for your business at the same time, if that makes sense. So, for example, anytime you get, you need to be, you know, working on your business, working on your website working on making posts, coming up with ideas, doing them long nights, doing whatever you have to do, so that way you can be constantly working on your business. Uh, because jobs will come and they will go, such as this morning. I had two phone calls, okay? And uh, or a phone call and someone reached out to me online. And they sent me pictures and everything and I gave them an estimate. One of the customers uh, flat out told me no. Like, they're, they're not gonna, go through with me uh, for that price and I wasn't about to lower my price either so I just said okay thank you for your request and left it alone like that because I do have a lot of things that I need to get done the second customer could have been a good job and everything like that never responded back to me some customers will let you know yes or no and some will bullshit you and some won't say anything at all and that's fine okay you should not be going out and trying to chase the money okay if they want to use you they'll use you if they don't want to use you they won't use you you don't always have you don't have to be the cheapest um so anyways i let that be uh that one was going to be a, a bulk item pickup for like a two-story apartment or something like that but uh anyways getting fuel and again uh in this video i'm gonna at the end of the video i'm gonna show you guys all the expenses for today and uh you'll you'll be surprised i'm sure because i could already tell uh you know my bank account took a big hit today but it's part of business
All right, so we're here. Got to dump it. It's feeling pretty tired, but got to get it done. All right, guys. Well, that's basically it for today. I'm just going to end up working on stuff within the home office and just hang out and chill out. And then tomorrow, I got to focus on uh, taking care of uh, dumping that trash trailer. Uh, we have a commercial job that we need to get done and uh, some other things as well but um yeah pretty basic simple day um nothing really major nothing really called in I, we didn't do any jobs today so we made again zero dollars as far as expenses i have written them down so since this morning i went ahead and tallied everything up all right so you ready uh, we spent ten dollars on coffee i spent ninety dollars on an oil change seven hundred dollars on uniform $132 on a citation, uh, $50 on the first dump fee, $100 in fuel, and then uh, $50 on the second dump fee, and then employee cost, uh, today was about, I think, eight hours or so. So I don't wanna say what I pay my employees. Uh, I'm not gonna say that. So as far as the hours and stuff, a rough idea let's just it was over a hundred dollars okay so over a hundred to 150 bucks uh as far as labor today so all in all a total of one thousand two hundred and fifty two dollars is what i spent today as far as uh just things going on as expenses within the business um so the main cost being the seven hundred dollars in uniforms which was money put away, and I knew that expense was gonna come up anyways. Uh, the other expenses were things that uh, just you know occur during a business. So you're always gonna have your food expense. So if you're feeding yourself or you pay for your guys' lunch, that's coming out of your business for you guys. Uh, your fuel costs, of course, your dump fees, um, any servicing like oil changes, uh, which really oil changes probably like once a month or something like that. Uh, depending on how many miles you put on your truck. It could be t two or three months. Um, but uh, my truck was telling me it was time for an oil change, so that's why I went. Uh, and then dump fees and uniforms. So, yeah. I mean, even without uh, the uniforms or the ticket, I mean, you'd still be spending, you know, a good amount of money for the day. And that's how every day is basically is you're going to be spending money in your business. Every time you get in that truck, you're spending money to go make money. So don't be the cheapest guy and understand that in this business, in any business, there's going to be days where you're not making money for that one day. So don't consider it a loss, okay? Because it really comes down to monthly cash flow, okay? So your business needs to be creating a certain amount of profit every month, okay? And every two weeks or every week, you got to be paying your employees. As far as paying yourself, when you're starting out, you're really not going to be paying yourself, if any, or at all, especially if you have a job. All the money should be going into the business. Now, with me, I pay myself once a month, and then I pay my guys every two weeks. Uh, if you pay your guys every weekly, it's more for you to you know, keep up with. And if you're paying a payroll service, it costs more on your end. Uh, so I do every two weeks. Um, so yeah that's basically how it goes and as far as like how i pay myself i'm a c corp llc so basically i do owner draw okay so i can pay myself however much i want but once i pay myself which basically i could withdraw the money out of an atm i could go to the bank and withdraw it or i could do a straight deposit uh from my account to my personal account and once that money is out of the account or once that money is in my personal account, that is taxable income for me as a person. Uh, so self-employed and you'll pay anywhere from 30 to 40 percent tax on that money, no matter what. So when tax season comes, all that money you paid yourself is getting taxed, uh, you know, pretty, pretty heavily. So I pay myself as little as possible just enough to pay my bills and everything like that. And if any other stuff comes up, then I'll take the money out. But other than that, I try to run everything through my business. And uh, you know, there's other ways to make uh, money as well. Um, so anyways, um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it for today. So I wanted to break that down to give you guys an insight of what it's really like uh, whenever you're not working, okay? So like when there's no jobs on schedule, uh, you know, how things could end up going uh, for you. And I've seen guys who things happen to them and in one day they could end up spending five, ten thousand dollars uh so you know it's one of the things where uh you have to make sure your business is making money okay and don't look at it from day to day or week to week look at it as month to month as how much revenue is your business bringing in per month and how much of expenses are going out and what are and out of those expenses what are those expenses are they operational costs like your fuel your dump fee uh things like that or are they like personal or like not personal but like are they spending is it spending that could be managed so like me going and getting coffee i didn't have to get coffee but i did uh you know me buying the uniforms i didn't have to buy uniforms but i did me um you know uh employee costs i could have cut employee costs and not have had them work today but i did have them work today uh and that's another thing is just because you get slow and stuff like that, especially when you're you already established, okay? For you new guys, this isn't for you, but like, if you're already established and you're making money in your business and you decide to cut your team member's time or not pay him or something like that, and say he's your only worker or your second worker or your third worker, if they're working for you, you should be paying them, all right? So not cutting their time uh, and stuff like that unless it's absolutely necessary then you sit down and talk to him that's just my view on that but anyways uh so yeah there's things that you can manage as far as expenses within your business but only so much so it's important that you when you start your business uh for the new guys as well um you need to look at your numbers and figure out what's coming in what how much money did i make this month and how much did i spend this month within the business and then you'll come up with your you know, profit, if that makes sense. But anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. I'll see you at the next one, all right? Thanks for watching.